talk, we've been talking a lot on our leadership journey about how being error free just doesn't make any sense because all human beings are fallible. We all make mistakes and focusing, um, uh, trying to change, get rid of people's fallibility is almost important, almost impossible. And I'm going to make the argument that trying to get rid of blame or having sort of being a blame free culture is is just as difficult. sort of a look of accountability um, that many of our accountability matrices in our organizations are are blame are based on. So people are, if people are unaware of the expectation or they're unable to fulfill the expectation or they do not perform as expected, which of these do you think is blame worthy? So you can just type in an answer, you can type in a number, which of these do we see as being blameworthy? So Kevin's put in three. Okay. Jennifer says none of them. Zero. Some people have three. Okay, great. Good. Now, for those of you who said three, that is how we have been operating for a long time. So, you know, if people are behaving badly and guilt works to help us conform to the norms of our society, right? Then guilt can be good. Um, so, you know, blame, we see this as a way of holding people accountable and, and keeping them in, in line, right? So that is perfectly, this was a perfectly reasonable way to start thinking about things. But that's if we think of, of safety <laughs> as a choice or not a choice or arising from ultimately the human action. But when we look at number three and we look at it from a hop lens, we recognize that there's lots of other reasons why people not might not perform as planned. So is it an error? Have we created an error prone situation? Are there some unexpected uh, conditions? Is it, um, do we have ambiguity in the way that we've set our expectations or we've set mixed messages with multiple non-compatible expectations? Have we over relied on expertise um, in order to create a safe condition? Or is there a lack of resilience in our operations, in our tools or in our equipment? So, if we realize that even if people do not perform as expected, there is also some systemic, there, there are some other systemic situations here. So I, I want us to think about that accountability isn't really the same thing. And we have talked about it this way for a long time. Accountability isn't really the same thing as personal responsibility. Accountability, when we think about it as a leadership practice, as a way, it, it is really a way to maintain systems integrity um, and systems control. And then it's not really a personal thing. We have to think, how do we create an environment where people um, can meet those expectations. And if we look back at all of the all of the ways that an organizational system can pe keep people from doing that or make them think that the best decision is not to do the procedure as um, as it's been written, but to do it differently, it's it's really important. Everybody probably knows this particular principle of human and organizational performance that blame fixes nothing. Um, and blame fixes nothing um, because it ignores our blue line. 
And worse, it drives out our curiosity for that blue line. So I just want to make sure um, that everybody is aware of the blue line and the black line. But the black line is essentially work as planned. And the blue line is work as actually in practice. And that red line there, which both um, with which Todd uh, puts in and Bob puts in is sort of that hazard line. And what we are paying attention to as safety leaders is we need to be curious enough about that blue line to know when it's moving towards that hazard. And I also think about that red line as, as being uh, as changing as well, because that hazard is the line that moves and emerges based on changing conditions that we are working in. Now, blame and guilt, the problem with it, the reason why it doesn't fix anything is because it's enforcing the tyranny of the black line. And the black line is not real. We've just imagined it. It's it's it might be helpful as a guidepost. I know many of us work in highly regulated environments and that we get audited. The first thing people are going to be asking us for are our procedures. Um, and it's not that we're going to ever stop writing procedures, but <laughs> we also have to recognize that that isn't what we're managing to. Blame makes sense if we still believe that if everybody just sticks to the black line, then we'll be okay. So we can just shame and guilt people until they make the choice to follow that black line. But that's not really the world that we're living in. There's no black line. So let me ask you all a question. When you think about the relationship between blame and learning, what do you think the relationship between blame and learning is? Anything you think? Yeah. So Chris, you're saying, yeah, blame stifles learning, right? There's, yeah, brain breaks down learning. Yeah, this is what we know from studying psychological safety. That blue line, the reason why it's squiggly like that is it because it's really a series of little learning curves. And in any point in learning, there's that dip, right? Where you're confused, where you don't know what's going on, right? When you're struggling to, to conquer a new idea or a new skill, the learning curve starts with a drop and then you move up and, and then you plateau when whatever it is that you learn no longer um, applies, will no longer improve your performance. So that blue line is certainly workers adapting to their conditions, but that adaptation is learning. And psychological safety is a necessary condition for organizational learning. Build accountability by strengthening organizational, operational, and psychological systems through inquiry and learning. Our best recovery method within our accountability systems is inquiry and learning and recognizing that organizational systems, you know, how we um, define roles, um, our power structures within our organization, um, you know, how we define and manage success, that's part of our accountability system. Our operational systems, you know, our procedures, um, uh, our communication within our operations, that also becomes part of our accountability system, our psychological systems, how we create psychological safety, how we um, create an opportunity for people to manage their difficult emotions, those also support our accountability systems. Then actively manage our emotions from uncertainty and surprise and, and disappointment separately. <laughs> That's part of, I think, what it is to be a leader is to uh, be emotion develop our emotional intelligence to a point where we can emotionally regulate our teams and we can emotionally regulate ourselves so that we recognize that those emotions happen but we minimize the bias that they can introduce by just, you know, having a time when something bad happens for people to process it, to 
to mourn it, to talk about it, to express their frustrations, to verbalize their defense narratives, and then be able to address those defense narratives and continue to reframe that so that we can create a system of meaning for people that allows them to be successful at work.